Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday the 13th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here are tonight's top stories. Tonight, new FCC rules are designed to ruin political speech. Then, the law that would make it illegal to film police. And how holding a door open is now considered sexist. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Yeah, if you're chopping women's genitals off and torturing them, selling them into rape slave gangs, that's trendy and liberal because it's foreign culture. Ugh, ugh. Well, the FCC finally made public the details of the so-called net neutrality rules that were approved two weeks ago. And as we've stated, the internet is already free and open, so this amounts to little more than a power grab. Now, you can view a PDF of the full 400-page document online. We've pulled out a few of the things for you here. On its face, it seems like some of these things, like no throttling and no blocking, these are good. They're valuable to the public interest. But then you start seeing words like enforcement, required, it must be, and legal authority, and they're creating a whole uh, or organization to come and enforce these rules. So, of course, you're, you know, this spells out government micromanagement. Um, but, of course, this document doesn't protect people who are downloading copyrighted material. So, in that sense, they can. They're still leaving the door open to be able to throttle services. Uh, they say they're rendering it effectively, if not technically useless. So, they're kind of skirting around their own rules there. It will also give government authorities the ability to censor their political enemies and limit their use of the Internet. Now, you'll recall we reported last year on an FCC study. They were going around to newsrooms and doing a poll, basically, of journalists, having them take this test, uh, talking about their news philosophy and how do they pick out the stories, how do they choose the certain stories that they decide to, to air. And it, you know, it was an obvious, underhanded attempt to revive the fairness doctrine. And, of course, we've already heard rumblings of you know, making sure you're being fair with the ads that you put on your website. All of this stuff was forewarned about by one of the FCC's very own commissioners, Ajit Pai. He said, the internet has become a powerful force for freedom, both at home and abroad. So it's sad to witness the FCC's unprecedented attempt to replace that freedom with government control. So this was coming out, you know, in the days leading up to this, uh, this ruling taking place. He was warning everyone that, you know, this is not net neutrality. This is government micromanagement, and you know that's what we're going to be seeing more of. Now, we'll report more on these FCC rules in depth as we go through the 400 pages, but something that we did notice right away and we found very interesting was that you'll find in the footnotes, it'll say something like Google's opinion, eBay's opinion, uh, even companies like Etsy, who aren't even that big yet, all giving opinions to this FCC report. So kind of curious when all that was taking place. And it's also just kind of revealing once again that there is no transparency within Congress, no transparency with the public. But here they have corporations, you know, Internet corporations being able to get in on the negotiations here with the FCC. So that is very troubling. Now, something else coming out of Texas. This is a new bill that's uh, being introduced and they're trying to make it illegal to film police. Now, this is House Bill 2918. It was introduced by Texas Rep. Jason Villalba on Tuesday. Uh, he wants to make that offense a misdemeanor if you are a private citizen recording police within 25 feet. And citizens who are armed would have to be 100 feet away. Now, here this bill, he's trying to say only representatives of radio or TV organizations that hold an FCC license... Uh, and also newspapers and magazines, th these are the only people that are going to have the right to record police. Now, the legislator, he went on Twitter and he wanted to make it clear he doesn't want to make the filming of cops illegal. He just wants people to back up a little bit. So obviously, if you're a person who's being pulled over by an officer, you're going to be a little too close to be recording them, uh, according to this bill. Um, if you're a person who has concealed carry, you have your gun in your car and you're being pulled over, and you want to record that altercation, uh, you know, there you're going to be charged with a misdemeanor. So this is obviously, you know, go going against the First Amendment. And I'm sorry, but news organizations, radio, television, they're not going to get to the destination, to the scene of the crime in time to record 
any kind of experience that you're having with police officers. So this is a terrible bill. Hopefully it'll get shut down. It's, you know, going against the First Amendment. And he's trying to skirt around it and say, oh, well, I don't mean no filming at all. I just mean back up a little bit. And that's just, it's not going to work. You'll see in this next video, it was the filming of the police officer that caused the, the, the cop to back off and not arrest this woman's pit bull. So am I under arrest? No, your dog is, though. My dog's under arrest. Yeah, for what? Dog for being for a vicious and large dog. She's not vicious, she and she's not at me. large. I'm my dog has large. not so stepped want... out of my vehicle. You cannot take my dog. She has not done anything to anybody. She has not attacked anybody. She has not bit anybody. Just because somebody was scared to get in their car, you cannot take my dog. My dog has done nothing. So now not only do we have to deal with states like Mississippi wanting to give police the authority to enter your home without a warrant and shoot your dog if it's not caged up, but now we have police officers who are threatening to arrest people's pit bulls who are in their car. And he just, he had no authority to do that. That's why he walked away. You know, the cop, the dog did not even exit the vehicle and this woman stood her ground and recorded the entire altercation. So that's why it is important to film the police. <laughs> you know, you need that. You got to be able to use that in a court of law. Now, after the shooting of two police officers in Ferguson this week, we saw a really heartfelt tweet coming from the president. Thing that upsets me with this tweet is that it wasn't a press conference. He didn't you know, have the press meet him in the Rose Garden to talk about how wrong it is to be killing police officers in retaliation. But then he goes on to the Jimmy Kimmel show there and he gives a really lengthy speech to the legitimacy of the protesters. So he issues this tweet when it comes to saying, oh, killing cops is bad. But then he goes and he talks for a while on Jimmy Kimmel about the legitimacy of the protest. Now, in this case, I do not disagree with the president. The protesters do have a legitimate reason to be out there protesting. We've seen some really good things coming out of those protests. And like the protesters say, that didn't come from them. They had nothing to do with it. So because some crazy person decides to shoot at cops doesn't mean now we just need to shut it down and people shouldn't have the right to protest. But this is also what the president said after all the rioting and looting. He came on television and said that the grievances of these rioters and looters was legitimate and understandable. So once again, the president is not condemning this action. Uh, he's basically being like method man of the Wu-Tang Clan who went on MSNBC this week to say that the police officers who were shot in Ferguson this week brought it on themselves. He said, you reap what you sow adding that a recent FBI report that were highlighted these abuses are responsible for the backlash against the police. But here again, we have both of these people using their public platforms, one being the president of the United States, who's supposed to be a leader, not, not stopping to fan the flames of this civil unrest, but helping to sort of foment the idea that it's us versus them, that it's protesters versus the police, citizens versus the police. It's, you know, not coming down to to stop this false narrative that is continuing with Mike Brown. He didn't have his hands up. He wasn't trying to surrender. He w didn't have his back turned. And we know that as well from these documents that have been released through the Department of Justice official investigation. Now, here when Method Man says something like this, you reap what you sow, obviously he has a lot of followers, but that's a ridiculous argument. That's basically saying that black men deserve it or have it coming because these police officers who were shot didn't even work for Ferguson. It was just random. They randomly killed cops. So it's the same argument that you're making that cops are targeting black men indiscriminately. So it just doesn't even make sense. And as we've also reported, Jakari Jackson did a, a report on this as well, where most of the protesters have been peaceful. They've been going about this very smartly, actually working up uh, to get a civilian oversight committee. They've been going through the courts, doing it the right way. And then you have someone who just comes in and shoots at the police, and the president only issues a tweet condemning that action. And, you know, obviously we do want to ensure that the police have a measure of accountability and that, you know, intrinsic racism in police departments 
is dismantled. Of course we want that. But you can't say that killing police officers in retaliation is justified. That is a ridiculous argument, and people really need to start making that distinction. Now, we've reported how some cities are doing away with their police agencies altogether and moving toward private law enforcement. But check out one city's solution to privatizing their police. Recently, we brought to the story about the Texas town that replaced their law enforcement with private security and then saw a 61% decrease in crime. And I understand that's not a one-size-fits-all policy. You may have other sheriff's departments, other police departments that get along very well with their communities. So when I heard there was a story, a similar story in Michigan, I was very intrigued, but also somewhat concerned. Because in Michigan, they have a private-funded police department, which I think is great, but they also have it set up. If you donate enough money, you can then apply as a reserve officer. Which brings up questions about how well these guys are actually trained. Police Academy. Oh! I want to welcome all of you to Citizens on Patrol. Citizens on Patrol. The Police Academy has offered to train you citizens. You just don't think I'm fast enough anymore, do you? To better protect yourselves. <laughs> do we get to pack heat? Yes, ma'am, you can pack a gun. And I'll give the police department the benefit of the doubt and say that these officers are exceptionally well trained but you still have the issue of being able to pay to play. If you have enough cash, you could potentially become a reserve officer, which has some people on edge. You know, what if somebody gets on the force that isn't exactly the uh, moral equivalent of we want our officers to be? Because even with a regular police department, these guys undergo psychological evaluations and you still have uh, these rogue guys who end up on the streets. So ultimately, I do applaud the chief's ambitions, but only time will tell how well this thing works out. You can find more reports on InfoWars.com, and hopefully they don't end up with guys like this. This is great, man, isn't it? Me and you, security guards, out here acting like real cops. Wait, that's my car! You may reprocure your vehicle. National Security! Get out of the damn car! Didn't your mama teach you any manners? At least you could ask me nicely! Well, if you're following me on Twitter, you can usually get the gist of whatever it is I feel like ranting about on the news. And this is one story in particular that really caught my eye. This is coming out of HuffPost. They're reporting that chivalry is now sexist. This is according to a new study. So that's right. If you were raised to respect women and to open doors and be polite, you are a sexist but you're a good sexist because these are some new terms, at least to me, coming out of the study. This is out of Northeastern University in Boston. They say there are two types of sexists out there. Acts of so-called chivalry, like paying for dinner, offering up jackets, and calling a woman love or dear can be signs of benevolent sexists. You're the good sexists. But hostile sexists are those who specifically leave housework to wives and girlfriends or they do the wolf whistles at women who are walking down the street. So these are hostile sexists. And, you know, I guess if you leave all the housework to your children, like Joe Jennings does back in the control room, he is a passive sexist. Either way, you have a penis, you're a sexist. That's what this report boils down to. So the co-author and psychology professor Judith Hall at this Boston-based university told the Daily Mail that while some women consider the behavior of benevolent sexists to be gentlemanly and courteous, benevolent sexism is like a wolf in sheep's clothing because it perpetuates support for gender inequality. Oh my gosh, I just, I hate what third wave feminism is doing to our country. She says, if a man is carrying out these actions because he believes a woman is fragile and thus requires protection, then he's being sexist. But if he's doing it to be kind, then that's just being polite. So I don't know, whenever a man opens the door for me, I really doubt that he's sitting there in his mind going, oh, she's so fragile. I don't think that she could open this door all on her own. You know, I've, I've even had it now to where men will not open the door for me, and I, what I actually see going through their head is, oh, I don't want her to think that I'm being a sexist, so I'm just gonna let the door slam in her face. This is what is happening to our country. Now, she also went on to say that what she believes, the real question would be, is if the guy would be offended if she held the door for her. 
Now, a, a woman tweeted this out, and this is, I think, hits the nail on the head. This is Teresa Tomeo. She said, let me get this straight. Men being nice to women is sexist, but Christian Grey is a dreamboat. Seriously? And of course, you know, I haven't read the novels, but Christian Grey is apparently this guy that gets off on tying up women and beating them. So that's what third wave feminism is doing to women. They don't, they have their hashtag kill all men, but really it's kill all the nice men. That's what they're doing is they're scaring men. They don't want to pay for dinner. And I'm sorry, but if you take me out on a first date and you think that we're going to go 50-50, you are not. I'll pay for half, but you're definitely not going to get a second date with me. Now, and also the thing I think that's just really sad about this is we live in a society now where people are so quick to just swipe left or right, and it's always on to the next, on to the next. And one of the ways that a man can actually show you that you're special and important is by doing these things for you. But now that just makes me weak, I guess, because I'm conservative. And it's all of these trendy liberal women in New York who are <laughs> in Boston who are outnumbered by men two to one. And so they're single and they let all of these men walk all over them. So that is fact, that's science. You can go look that up. Well, coming up next, right after this, we are going to have an in-depth report from Alex Jones. He is making fun of Funny or Die and their perpetual need to spread propaganda. And we've got some other special reports coming up as well. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 the totalitarian left is in deep trouble their lies about self-defense and the right to keep and bear arms are being exposed more and more traditionally liberal individuals are getting into the second amendment the second amendment's culture of individual liberty and self-defense is popular it's sexy it's fun the first rule of being free is the right to self-defense. And in their campaign against freedom, they're turning up the heat and getting caught in their lies. And finally tonight here at InfoWars Nightly News, we're going to analyze propaganda. In fact, propaganda that is being financed by some of the richest billionaires in the world, as well as the Justice Department and the federal government. Funny or die, uh, got funding from the Brady campaign, which is also funded by George Soros and people like Mayor Bloomberg, who have huge entourages of armed bodyguards, but don't want you to have any self-protection. They've put out a video that is so ridiculous, so deceptive, uh, that it has absolutely blown up in the face 
of the makers. And we're going to play some clips here from it and uh, analyze this propaganda and then go into the actual facts from places like the LA Times and the FBI. So let's go to the first little section of this clip and break down this tissue of lies. They start out by saying, until now, it's been hard for criminals to be able to go out and get guns or to find out where to get them. Criminals get most of their guns by robbing people's houses. And the places around the country that have the highest crime rates are areas that have the most restrictive gun laws. We're going to show you those stats. But let's go to the intro clip where they then claim that gun owners want to, quote, wear leather jackets and yell at women. So they mix in some type of weird feminist angle to this as well. Here it is. How would a criminal like me know which states permit me to carry loaded guns in their amusement parks, golf courses, or beaches? I have some violent friends. We all wear leather jackets and scream at women. And we want to find out which states we can buy and sell guns easily. Okay, before we go further into this propaganda piece, as they prey on their ignorant audience, let's actually go through some of the facts. Not from Infowars.com, but directly from the Los Angeles Times. Here's the article from 2013. Gun crime has plunged, but Americans think it's up, study says. And then the LA Times goes in to the same reports that Forbes covers. Disarming realities as gun sales soar, gun crime plummets because criminals are scared of law-abiding citizens with guns. We need good people with guns and we need the bad people to be scared of it. But the ruling political class that's out of control wants us disarmed because slaves are disarmed. It's that simple. Now let's actually look on screen at some of the statistics from FBI.gov. The latest numbers we have are from 1992 to 2013. We have a 50 plus percent drop in guns being used in crimes and gun related deaths since 1992. But you go to the Brady campaign website that paid for this and they say there's an epidemic of gun violence in America. But as the LA Times said, it's a perception. For at least a decade after Jaws came out in the early 1970s, resorts all over North America saw upwards of half of their visitors drop because they think sharks are there and are about to eat them. You cannot make this up. Let's go to the second clip where they imply that, again, it's states like Arizona allowing people to get guns when Arizona follows the exact same federal law. Here's part two of the lies. That's the site to find out where it's easiest for felons and fugitives to buy, carry, and even traffic guns. That's why I love Arizona, where I can go see the beautiful Grand Canyon and carry a loaded gun without even having to get a background check. You would fail that background check. This is base propaganda, what you're seeing, where they then act like animals, uh, stereotypes of uh, men out of control. The woman starts sticking a gun in her mouth. This is an actress and an actor. They're trying to demonize a fundamental right. We're defending the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Second, the Tenth, all of them. This is a full-out assault on the basic underpinnings of this country. Let's go to the clip uh, where they then act like wild animals and try to demonize gun owners. Hungry for guns. I understand that CrimAdvisor.com will tell me which states really cater to us criminals and creeps, but... Now, Chicago has the highest crime rate in the world, not just the U.S., but the second highest crime rate is D.C., with a total gun ban. And the Supreme Court overturned it six years ago. They've still bureaucratically ignored that, so they still have the second highest crime rate. Here's an article, violent crime in D.C. surges in 2012, and it's just continuing to do so. Uh, meanwhile, Chicago murder rate in 2013, right through to the next year, far worse with strict gun control in place because the criminals have nothing to fear. They don't follow the gun laws, which is what makes this funny or die piece so ridiculous. But then a year later, when Chicago allowed limited because of that Supreme Court case, DC versus Heller concealed carry, criminals got scared because see law abiding citizens follow the law and didn't have guns. So the criminals had free reign, limited concealed carry, just a few thousand permits issued and crime began to drop immediately in Chicago. It's like introducing penicillin when you've got a toothache. It's killing the bacteria. It's scaring the criminals. It's, it's, it's deterring them, feeling like they have free reign. 
And in the final lie, the final clip we're going to play from this piece, from Funny or Die, they show flags that, according to them, the criminals that want to get guns and are pro-Second Amendment, that these are the states that they don't like. And they mention Maryland and New York. Well, notice it's Maryland and New York that have the most restrictive gun laws across the nation, and it was a cop killer from Maryland who went to New York and shot the two cops in the head. So literally everything they say is the inverse of reality. But California, Connecticut, Maryland, and New York all have laws to keep guns out of the hands of people like us. Oh, I wanna shoot California so bad. Boo, California. Boo. So again, notice this is all happening in these gun-free zones, just like the mass shootings are happening in the public schools and other areas that advertise themselves as a place for Prozac heads to come where they won't be resisted, where they can ghoulishly kill innocent people. And finally tonight, if you actually go to the website that they're advertising, it's registered, as you can see here, by the Brady campaign to, quote, end gun violence that is financed by every globalist you can imagine, George Soros, uh, Bloomberg, you name it. It is registered directly to them, and they actually show you states where you can go that do have laxer gun laws in the hopes that criminals could get guns. Well, it's not our fault that criminals go out and commit crimes, but to actually advertise for lazy, stupid criminals ways to try to get around other states' laws is actually aiding and abetting, which is their point. I've been firing guns since I was five years old. I've never had an accident, knock on wood. I have no criminal record, and firearms have helped me stop criminal activities multiple times in my life. Guns are used many more times to stop crime than they're used to be involved in crime. Do we say disarm the police because sometimes bad cops do bad things? No. We know that having an armed, trained person makes us all safer. There is a revolution taking place in the Second Amendment right now. A lot of liberals are waking up to this and becoming real liberals who believe in human empowerment. A lot of women are becoming real feminists and going out and learning how to protect themselves. So-called liberals would never want their daughters or sons to know how to protect themselves and just lay down and be raped. Homeland Security and others tell women to vomit or pee on people that are busting in their houses. This is insanity. We're not afraid here at Infowars.com, even though we've been threatened by criminals and ISIS and others and death threats against this organization have been in the national news because we're ready to defend ourselves. We're not gonna roll over and die to tyrants like Hitler, Stalin and Mao and uh, their fellow travelers today. We understand that slaves are disarmed. We understand that free men will never turn in their firearms. As Thomas Jefferson said, no free person should be disbarred the use and ownership of firearms. It is the mark of a free, independent human to have a sword, to have a gun, to have private property, and to have due process. So we're going to end this special report tonight from a historic uh, thing that happened about a year and a half ago. There had never been any political speech since the Alamo in 1836. It was opened back up for political events by the land commissioner. I was invited to speak for the first speech ever since the Alamo in San Antonio. Here is an excerpt of that speech. But I had to come down here just to tell you that the police officers that are here, the Homeland Security people that are here, all of them, you are going to be enslaved by this system. You, you will be targeted first when the globalists actually take over. And you know that in your gut. And there is an awakening happening worldwide. And we are that tip of the spear. And I am so proud of Texas. We will take our rights back in San Antonio. We will take our rights back in Austin. We will take our rights back in Chicago. We will take our rights back in Beijing. We will take our rights back in Mexico City. We will take our rights back in Australia and England and everywhere else because there is a worldwide awakening that is happening right now. We must hang together and retake Texas and then the Republic because the globalists know the world is waking up to them, so they are accelerating a program to take over. We are in a key juncture in history. You can politically see it. You can feel it, you know it, and that's why I admire people like Martin Luther King who would be arrested for his basic rights 
and to stand up against laws that were unconstitutional. And it's the same thing, it's the same thing with the folks that are wearing their firearms openly, which is already legal and lawful in many states. In other areas, those laws are what are in violation of the supreme law of the land, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution that only points out God-given basic rights that were there all along, but we have to breathe life into them. In closing, the reason we have to do this in an example of the tyranny we face is that everyone I know who lives in Hayes County, Williamson County, Travis County, and even in more rural areas than that, on 100 acre, 200 acre farms, are having folks move in, great folks who are ignorant. We need to wake them up and save them. They've been brainwashed, they're zombies. They're coming in and calling the police on folks when they're deer hunting or target shooting, and the police actually show up and arrest people even though there's no law because they've been told by the feds and get the 30 pieces of silver to do it. They are persecuting gun owners everywhere. We are a persecuted group because the globalists know that we're the seed of political understanding that will sweep away their tyranny. And that is why they're coming after us. So we have to either get on our knees as slaves or get on the offense and take this country back. Remember what Diane Einstein said. She said, if I could get the votes, Miss and Miss America, turn in all your guns. They want all our guns. They're not misguided. They're not misguided liberals. They are authoritarians who are arming to the teeth against us. They want to make us their slaves. And to Obama and Dianne Feinstein and all the tyrants like Joe Biden and all those that came before him, you can take my gun from my cold, dead hand. In the words of Charlton Heston, but believe me, we're not going to lay down if you offensively attack us. We're going to stand up just as they did at Lexington and Concord. They didn't shoot first. They didn't ask for the trouble, but they said if they mean to have a war, they're going to have one because these globalists, they are the usurpers that have come into our country and taken it over. They are the occupiers. They have captured our nation. They brag that they've captured America. Well, to chase Manhattan, to all the big mega banks, you don't run this country, you've stolen it by fraud, and we've identified you, and we're taking the republic back. God bless you all. Yeah! Yeah! Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. Well, here at a supermarket in Toledo, you can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and 
adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. As all of your medical data begins to move online, is there a reason to be concerned about what these companies are going to be doing that are in charge of storing all of that data? Obviously, there's a little bit of concern about third parties that are going to be receiving information from these wearable devices. Uh, but take a look at this. NPR highlighted this story this week. It's a key loophole in a medical privacy law. Now, this deals with a University of Oregon student who says that she was raped by three basketball players last year. She's suing the school after she says the university mishandled her assault. Now, the University of Oregon did find these three players responsible and they kicked them off the team as well as they kicked them out of school. But they didn't give the girl due process because there was no court case. Nobody was charged with a crime, and it was only later revealed that one of these players had already been kicked out of another school, uh, suspended from a previous college team under the same sexual assault allegations. So here, this girl, she didn't even get the chance or the opportunity to take these guys to court and hopefully take one of these rapists off the street, you know, alleged rapists. So the school just kind of washed their hands of it, did away with it, let these guys walk off basically. But those are just some of the reasons that the girl sued the school. But here is where the privacy issues come in. Now the student is who is suing the school, she got some therapy at the university's health clinic. And in preparing to defend itself against her complaint, the university got access to those records and then forwarded them off to their attorney. Now the school says in court papers that since the student went to the school's health clinic, her health records belong to the school and therefore they could be accessed. In addition, they also argued that because the woman claimed emotional distress, which is a medical claim, the school says that they were entitled to her medical records as well under a federal law that's known as the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, which is where they can access your uh, medical records and pass them on to family or other parties uh, in Cases like this would be extreme. You would never think that the school would want to go in and get your health records to protect themselves against a court case. Normally, you would use this if your parents needed to access your medical records or something like that. So, so much for doctor-patient confidentiality, and not to mention the fact that students are already really reluctant to go and seek medical help. So now, obviously, this is going to scare them off even more. Um, but this is just just one company. This is one school, one private organization. What are other companies going to stand to gain from having all of your private data? It, they're going to be private corporations in charge of handling all of that medical information. They're going to send it off to a lot of other third parties. You're going to get pinged from big pharma <laughs> when they see that your blood pressure is high, things like that. So what do these other corporations have to gain from owning your data? Facebook has announced this week that in addition to tracking what you search for on the internet and what sorts of articles you share with your friends and family and things that you like on the site, it has announced that it's now going to start telling advertisers just what its users are saying about that company online. Now they say that the plan is going to show marketers what audiences are saying on Facebook about events, brands, subjects, and activities so that they can get a holistic and actionable view of their audience for the first time. They say that this is because marketers want to understand what people think so that their products and marketing can be more relevant to their customers. Now, in the past, it would be based on what sort of articles you shared, uh, but now they're actually going to be using topic data to scan your conversations. So they're gonna be scanning the conversations, the things that you comment on, the things that you're talking about with your friends and family, things, of course, that you're putting in your uh, direct messages with your Facebook friends. Um, and also their announcement doesn't give any indication of whether or not you'll be able to opt out of this scanning of your conversations. Recently, one Facebook user, Daniel Cap, 
says that he wrote a status message. He was announcing that he was battling cancer and he started searching for this topic online and he began to be bombarded with advertisements for funeral homes. Can you imagine here, you you're just learn that you're battling cancer so you start trying to understand the disease and you're seeing targeted advertising for funeral homes? So this program just once again underscores how Facebook believes that they own you. They own anything that you put on its site. They claim ownership on just about everything, including all the pictures that you post online as well. And you basically agree to it when you sign on to that user agreement and so you really have no realistic expectation of privacy. Of course, Facebook's not the only one that's guilty of this. We reported just yesterday that people who are using Siri, uh, Apple revealed that they too are collecting mass data, recording it, and transmitting this voice data to third parties. Samsung's smart TV is doing the exact same thing. Now, not to be outdone with exploiting all of this big data, Mattel, who of course makes children's toys, has just announced Hello Barbie. Hello Barbie is connected to Wi-Fi and it uses speech recognition to communicate with kids. And they say they're just creating this Barbie in response to the call from young girls who say they would just love to be able to have a chat with Barbie. So now they talk to this doll, uh, it records children's voices and then it sends the data to the cloud where that information can be stored for up to two years and in Mattel's demo Barbie is asking all kinds of questions of these kids it's it's you know what are your interests tell me about your family so of course that's information that can be of great value to advertisers and it can be used to market unfairly to children and we already know that they market to children they have a specific way that they uh, line the cereal up on the grocery shelf. They know that if they put the cereal with the cartoon character's eyes angled up at the children, as the children are walking down the aisle, they're going to look down and say, Mommy, I really want that cereal because it's, it's talking to me, basically. So they have this down to a science. We already know how scandalous advertisers can be. So of course, they're going to exploit the information that they are gathering from your children who are just innocently playing with these dolls. But of course, this is in addition to all of the wearable devices that are being pushed. These things are going to track your data, let you know when you need to get up from your chair and start walking around more, let you know when your blood sugar is a little low or high or, hey, you know, put that candy bar down or you might need to make an appointment with your doctor. And a, a lot of people are really pumped about these wearable devices. We're seeing a lot of these uh, coming up here at South by Southwest, which is going to be starting this week. And of course, when you sign up to use these Apple products and whatever kind of wearable devices are out there, you have to sign that user agreement that, yeah, your information can be shared with third parties. Now, here's one of the talks at South by Southwest, a conspiracy theorist guide to health tech. They say, what if buying junk food and not hitting your daily activity goal raises your insurance? What if your watch alerted Big Pharma that your blood pressure is too high. Just think about all the biometrics from wearables, implantables, and smart pills. Besides you and your doctor, who else could benefit from that data? What can they do with it? And how could it affect you? So obviously, you know, we're just not the conspiracy theorists here at InfoWars talking about this. This is a huge international conference too that's talking about what could be the what could be the issue with this wearable technology. One of the big themes that we're going to be seeing at South by Southwest this year is big data and specifically how companies who have these vast troves of data on all of their employees, how those companies can monetize all of that data that's just sitting there in their databases. So imagine if all of the makers of these wearable devices decide to go the route of Facebook. There's a lot of money to be made in that data. Imagine if they decide to go the route as Facebook and say that they own all of the data that they collect on you. You know, you have to read the user agreement. It's all there. You consent to that when you decide to use their device. And of course, you're sending that information via Wi-Fi to these third parties. Now, Edward Snowden, who was a keynote speaker at last year's South by Southwest, warned developers there that they really need to be focusing on stronger encryption and ways to really protect their user data. But of course, it seems in contrast, they're moving toward exploitation. They don't want to protect all that information because there's so much money to be made 
off of all the data that these apps and wearable devices and different things are collecting about us. So we'll be at South by Southwest all week covering the action all the way from interactive to film and music. So be sure to tune in every day to InfoWars.com for more reports. Well, thank you for tuning in to the show tonight. And I wanted to answer some of your questions. A lot of people hit me up on Twitter and they say, Leanne, what's really the best way to support your operation? Obviously, signing up for a PPTV account. You know, we hook it up. You guys can share your username and password with up to 20 people. Uh, also, even just hitting the subscribe button on our YouTube channel is a really good way to help support this operation. Uh, but also visiting the InfoWars store. Those are definitely things that help us run this operation. You know that we're not sponsored by Big Pharma or whatever, and we are creating the best products, giving you the best InfoWars Life products. And right now we are running a special. There's 10% off of everything. And that includes those items that are already marked down 30%. So men, if you are feeling a full on assault from all those feminists out there that wanna take you down a notch, get the super male vitality. Just turn the tables on them. That's the answer to the <laughs> attack on men is to just become super men. I recommend highly super female vitality for the ladies, and it really does make you ultra feminine. Uh, so go pick those up. We are running that special right now, 10% off everything using the promo code SUPER. We'll see you here Monday, 7 p.m. Central. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.